So again, on uh, September 2nd this year, we're celebrating our 30-year anniversary of uh, hope. And so we're going to have Summer of Hope moments like that throughout the summer um, uh, in uh, July and August. So we're looking forward to uh, telling and uh, sharing some of those stories. Hey, uh, next Sunday, uh, this place will be transformed. It's already, you go into uh, the bathroom area, you'll see the comments, all kinds of stuff out. You got this uh, AMPT, our Vacation Bible School, is happening this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Then on Sunday afternoon, or Sunday uh, after our 9 a.m worship celebration. We'll have a carnival for the community. Uh, we did that last year. Had all kinds of guests. There'll be some food trucks, um, uh, uh, shaved ice stuff, uh, whatever it is, Kona ice, I think. And uh, so, um, and then the Sunday after that, we're going to have our high schoolers, our Crave ministry, uh, kind of well, we'll let them loose, but then we'll contain them in a cage after that. Uh, and then um, we go into uh, August and uh, looking forward uh, to that. So uh, last week we started this series called uh, Flip. And um, the by byline of it is this, 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 what happens when God turns you around? Uh, today I want to ask this question, why do we experience flip resistance before flip grace. So uh, again, uh, I had a bunch of examples last week, and uh, I was going to consult with uh, Dr. Kristen Clark. Our, uh, she's a, a part of our school mom, and uh, she's been an OBGYN, probably has delivered some of the babies in the room here. She's been here. I was going to ask her, because again, there, I don't know if it's, maybe it's just an old wife's tale, you know, but when you're born, you're oftentimes born upside down, although sometimes I guess some of them are born sunny side up, uh, but you're usually born upside down, and when they, when you get born, they hold you upside down, whack you behind, and you go from uh, not breathing to breathing, you go from upside down to up, and they give you to mom, and there you go, there, there, you're, you've been flipped, and here we are, uh, all these years later, we, we keep breathing in and out, and we keep standing and uh, doing, doing stuff, so we've been flipped. Uh, the Bible is full of examples of this uh, concept called flip. So uh, last week we were looking at this whole idea that we go from alive. Actually, the Bible starts with us uh, being alive, and then we go back to dead because of the sin, but because of Jesus we can be alive again. We go from being free to being a slave to being free again. That's the whole story of God's people when they were in Egypt uh, as slaves. They come out of the promised land, and they're supposed to be free, but oftentimes they still have, and so there's this flipping going on, and there's this resistance in that. Now we go from, at times, uh, we can go from rich in God's grace to poor in God's grace to rich again. Uh, we can go from home to lost to home again. The Bible talks about this idea that we were started, we were meant to be near to God from the start, but because of the flip of sin, oftentimes we get so far away from God. God is the one that always is coming near to us to bring us back near to him, to home. So we were saying how that is all connected to our New Hope driving values. This whole idea that, you know, behind every set of eyes, your set of eyes, and every set of eyes you look into, there's a soul that matters to God. But this world tells us, and sometimes we tell ourselves, my soul doesn't matter, my soul doesn't matter, your soul doesn't matter, you're not pretty, you're, you're not wealthy, you're not powerful, you're not someone that, you know, you're just one of seven billion people. You don't matter. And there's a flip that, no, to God I matter. And more important than anybody else. God's saying my soul matters and me believing God saying my soul matters flips me. But man, sometimes there's so much resistance to believing that our soul matters. The second thing is that we want to be inviting and inspiring souls to follow Jesus. I'm not invited. Well, there's so many things in this world that doesn't inspire me, but sometimes, and, and sometimes I, I run after, I want inspiration. Man, do I want inspiration. I go to this concert, I watch this movie, but I, I go on this, to, to this lake, I go to this mountain, I go to this ocean, I fly here, I fly there, I, I go all these places, I'm looking for inspiration, and inspiration lets us down over and over in this world. And there might be some moments of great satisfaction and wonderful moments, you know, again, going to Disneyland, go to Disneyland if you can. But there's just not an inspiration that's going to last from anything in this world. Money's not going to do it. Sex isn't going to do it. Internet stuff isn't going to do it. Your cell phone's not going to do it. 
You know, there's this resistance, though, to being invited, inspired to follow this Jesus. He's always been doing that. He doesn't do it just once for us or twice. Even if we've resisted him a million times, he keeps inviting, he keeps inspiring. There's always the name of Jesus somewhere around us, inviting and inspiring us to follow Jesus. And we say it like this, uh, uh, we are God's chosen, holy and dearly loved. There's a warm family waiting for you. Not a family that's cold and distant and filled with all kinds of drama and all kinds of hurts and bad memories. But a family that likes us to be there, that wants us to be there. They're so glad to see us time after time after time, no matter how many times we come together. There's a warm family waiting for you. Where God's chosen holy and dearly loved. And then there's just this idea that, oh, less world, we're just not going to be able to hold on to this world as hard as, and as much strength, as much money, as much power, as much whatever it is that we have, especially as Americans, that we just, we can, just more Jesus. Jesus, turn us that we can receive more of you. Help us not to believe the lies that somehow we can hold on to our lives and make our lives work. Flip us, Jesus. As much as we resist us, please flip us. And last week I was supposed to do the following Jesus path, but it just kind of went and I blew that, that video that we watched. That was supposed to be last week, but sometimes I have bad moments. And uh, so, uh, so anyway, following Jesus path from not doing daily 15. Because life is busy. I get it. Life is real busy. And you got routines. you got patterns that you've already set in your life, you know. So you, here's how you get up in the morning and you do all these things and rush out the door and go to work. And here's what you do. And, you know, you got this family. Here's what you do after work. And here's what you do in the evening. you got all these things that you're doing, 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 doing. And they're just no daily 15, no daily 15, no daily 15. You've heard it. You've heard it. You've heard it. I mean, if you've been coming around New Hope, you've heard it. You've heard it. You've heard it. You've heard it. You heard it. Probably to ad nauseum. Probably is when is he going to stop talking? Because I, but I'm not going to stop talking because... Man, when you flip to do daily 15, it just changes your heart. It changes your thoughts about your Abba Father and Jesus and the Spirit of God. It changes the thoughts about your soul mattering, that you are chosen, holy, and dearly loved. You start realizing that this world keeps lying to us. It keeps making promises it will not be able to keep. But daily 15, I mean, there's words from 4,000 years ago. And they take hold of your heart and they do something like, God, I didn't know that could happen. So we go from not doing daily 15 to doing daily 15. You just start practicing. And this whole idea of a gathering every Sunday, you know, I've been talking about this idea that, you know, when we were in the, the last series about, you know, when the, this author said, you know, he'd say to his dog, hey, let's go to the dog park. The, the dog would start ragging and get all excited, get all excited, get all excited, get all excited. And that, what do we start doing that with going to church? Instead of like, oh, so many people around me, church again. But what do we start doing? Oh, oh, I get to go to here. Gather every seven. Gather every seven. Gather every seven. Jesus is going to do something for my heart. Jesus is going to do something for the hearts around me. Jesus is going to do something. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's going to be here. He's going to be here. We're going to sing some songs. We, we get to have our open hands to gather every seven. And this whole idea of this next fresh soul story from souls that were flipped this way to souls that are flipped this way. And it just happened over the last three days, four days at Life Fest. It's happening this morning at Life Fest. It's happening here this morning at New Hope. It's happening in churches all around. Next fresh soul story. And we go from trusting the earth foundation, the things of this world foundation, to trusting the foundation of Jesus. Hey, I want to uh, spend the rest of our time this morning talking about two flip stories. Uh, two flip stories of people in the Bible that probably many of you are familiar with. Maybe some of you aren't as familiar with them. But um, as we start looking at them, you're going to see that uh, they had resistance to flips, had resistance to ongoing flips that were needed in their lives so that they could follow Jesus the way that they would 
be called to follow Jesus. So that's a part of our stories for all of us in this room this morning. So two flip stories. I want to talk about Paul. And I want to talk about uh, Peter. So two stories. So let's look at the story of uh, Paul. In Acts chapter 9, it says this. But Saul, at first his name was Saul. And they're gonna get, his name's going to be changed, obviously. So it's going to go from Saul to Paul. And then, man, so much more is going to happen in Paul's life. Again, a big part of why we have God's chosen, holy, and dearly loved. That's from the pen of the apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 3. Because why we do Christ in us, the hope of glory, that's from the pen of the apostle Paul in Colossians chapter 1. And so, so much more of what God has done in and through Paul. But first, he had to be flipped. So we read in Acts chapter 9, but Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that he, if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And then it says, now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone all around him, and falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who, who are you? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were open, he saw nothing. So they led him by hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Next slide. There you go. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, in a dream, one of the dreams that are in the Bible, Ananias, he said, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, 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 I've heard about this man. How, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he is. He has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. Why would I want to go to this man? But the Lord said to him, go, go. For he is my chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him, and when you love this call, how much you must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered to the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, and again to me when I've, I've read this over the years, this man that has been persecuting and killing people because of Jesus. Now it's Brother Saul. More than likely, Ananias knew some people, maybe even some relatives, that Saul had been responsible for. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who has appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized and taking food, he was strengthened for some days. He was with the disciples at Damascus. So Saul went from this to being flipped. And then we continue to uh, see that... Um, We'll go out and serve, and here we are, 2,000 years later, still reading the inspiration from his pen. So now let's look at Peter. As we know, Peter was a disciple of Jesus, followed Jesus. We know so many stories about Peter. Here's one story sometimes that we overlook and miss, that this is way after the resurrection. It's many, many years later. And you would just think that Peter's soul would have been shaped and formed at, this at that time, that it wouldn't do the things that Paul writes about in Galatians. And so he needs a flip. It's not his first. There's been so many flips in Peter's life. And this won't be the last that he'll need. For all of us in this room this morning, Following Jesus is not just once. I mean, it's 
daily in some ways. We've got to keep dying to sin and rising to life. Dying to sin and rising. Dying to sin and following Jesus. Dying to sin and dying to things that we used to think were right and realizing that Jesus. So we read this in uh, Galatians. But when Cephas, that's another name for Peter, came to Antioch, he, I opposed him to, this is Paul writing, I opposed him to his face. Again, this is, a, in a sense, a junior follower of Jesus. The, uh, uh, Paul wasn't following Jesus. He, he knew about Jesus, persecuted the way of uh, Jesus after uh, Jesus' resurrection and ascension. But now his life has been so flipped. So he opposes uh, him to the face because he stood condemned. For behold, before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles, which again, the Jews and Gentiles just didn't mix at all. But now God is flipping that. But man, is it a hard flip. And you understand that. Look around us. It's hard for us to flip from being just kind of a all-white congregation. Or my ongoing prayers, I haven't done much about it for 30 years. So how do we get some color in here? So they have souls that matter. But boy, is that a tough flip for us. I don't have the answers. I just prayed, Jesus, if we can be flipped to see how many other souls matter. I mean, that's one of the things I love about Life Fest. You see all kinds of colors. And we've seen more colors over these last number of years. God flips all kinds of souls. And it says, uh, before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back, separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him so that even Barnabas was led to astray by their hypocrisy. And they're all dead guys. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile, not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. So there's a flip going on. Peter needed to be flipped once again and he was and again it won't be the first time it won't be the last time one more scripture again from the inspired hand of the apostle paul in ephesians 2 8 and 9 it's just a bold flip truth for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves it is the gift of god not by works so that no one can boast. So as we uh, draw this message to a close, one way, our resistance to Jesus' grace flips from our work flips can be softened. This resistance that we have to the grace of Jesus. One way, there's all kinds of ways. God's working all times, but one way is music. Music often softens our resistance to Jesus. It opens our hearts in some way. Again, uh, we'll talk about Life Fest, kind of this uh, party with a purpose for 20 years uh, in a little bit, but just want to talk for a moment about grace music. This idea of grace music. And grace music flips. Grace music flips. Just over and over. We've seen it happen in so many of your stories. Over the years, I've heard you tell me over and over again, I had no idea this kind of Jesus music existed. You know, maybe I had some experience growing up in church, and it was always hymns, it was always an organ. There's some great hymns and some great organ music in that, but somehow it just wasn't doing a whole lot for our hearts. And we were listening again when I was, uh, again, date myself way back in the 70s and that. You know, I was starting to follow Jesus. Man, I love doobies. Doobie Brothers, Jesus is just all right. Come on, they're singing about Jesus. 
uh, the Beatles, uh, man, one of the viral things, you know, Paul McCartney with this uh, carpool karaoke in that. Man, what a great trip down memory lane and just so very, very exciting. But again, just this music that it, 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 it lifts us. I mean, I enjoyed watching it, but, this, but it's not an eternal kind of thing. You know, the Beatles have been around, the music going to keep going on for 50 years, another 100 years, who knows? Country Western music, you know, Country USA, you know, the rock USA just happened. I mean, it looks like it's so big, but all that music just fades. Anybody remember, old enough to remember uh, MC Hammer, you can't touch this. I mean, just don't even, you know, and he, you know, at this age, MC Hammer, he's not dancing like that anymore. It's long past that. There's this grace music. And so many of you have flipped from listening to, you know, all the pop culture music that's out there, whatever genre it is. And you start listening to this Jesus music, and it does something to your heart. That as much as a country western song does something to your heart, it doesn't last where this grace music flips. So music gifts, just so good, and it's so grace, and there's just this soul flip. So this morning, uh, you know, reached way back, just that simple chorus, God, you're so good. Oh, you're so good. Even, even when it doesn't look like you're so good. You're so good. As we sing, uh, break every, or um, there's a cloud. Again, just, we receive your rain. We receive your mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. There's no time. No time in any of our lives when things are going really, really good that we don't need his mercy. When things are going not so good that we don't need his mercy. Oh, the prayer, Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. let it be on your lips. Let it be close to your heart. Be in your open heart, open hands. Receive the grace. And that great, great hymn, praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Not praise to myself, because I'm not almighty. That praise to the things of this amazing country, because it's not almighty. God's, what God has been around doing his work, putting grace into open hands long before America was even. And he's going to do it until he comes again. That's who this praise to the Lord Almighty is. And break every chain. Man, we can be chained thinking that we, we, we know what we're doing. We can live our lives. Look at everybody around us. They're living just like me. It's so hard to break the chains. But when he does, uh, when he does. And then uh, we'll end with uh, True North in just a moment. Because True North, we want to follow Jesus. We want him to turn us to that we follow him. So uh, last night, here's why I do Life Fest. 20 years, been doing it for 20 years. Parking cars, it was a hard year because it grew like crazy. But last night, finally, you know, all the cars are parked and the few that were coming in after that, I don't care. <laughs> so I got in my golf cart and went over to the Main stage. And David Crowder was playing. Man, I love his music. If you were here a few minutes before, you're hearing some of his music. As you go out this morning, you'll hear some of his music. He's just, wow, I just love him. I mean, the music quality, the sound, just, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. So I uh, went over to my golf cart and just worshiped for a few moments. All my hope, all my hope, he's singing. And looking over. Just this huge crowd and people in the grandstands and people all down front. And, and to the west, there was all of a sudden in the sun, everybody started cell phones out, taking pictures. I got a picture on my cell phone, the, the beams of light just flying up into the air. And people worshiping. And then I got my grandchildren because they love golf cart rides. <laughs> so I got Ella and her friend Elena and Jackson and Bryce and put them on a golf cart and 
of our way out and right, right away, go fast, go fast, Papa, go fast. We got to get past the people before we can do that. And then went out to a road and hit it. And, ah. I want Jesus to be touching their hearts now with a golf cart ride, with this mass of humanity, souls that matter, worshiping Jesus. I just love Jesus. I love his music that can turn hearts. I will never hear, you will never hear all the fresh soul stories that just happened at Life Fest over these past three days. But they're there. They're there for me again. They're there for so many of you. And you don't have to go to Life Fest to have a soul flip. Jesus might be flipping your soul right here, right now, today. And he'll do it later this afternoon and tomorrow and the day after that. And next Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday. Because Jesus loves to flip souls, to receive his grace. So our prayer through this series, Jesus, flip me to follow you. Would you put your hands out? And let's pray. Jesus, flip me to follow you. Let's do it again. Jesus, flip me to follow you. Let's stand and pray, and we'll sing True North, and let Jesus continue to flip our hearts. Ah, Jesus. We receive your gifts. We receive your grace. We receive your word. We receive your truth. Jesus, help us to have open hands, flip our hands. You know how we resist. You know how all of us in this room have this tendency to resist you. But Jesus, keep flipping us in gentle ways like you want for us, but even in ways that might be firm because you don't want us to be lost. You want us to be with you. You want us to follow. So Jesus, do what only you can do for our hearts so that we would follow you, follow you, follow you, true north, that we'd follow you with all our heart, 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 that we'd follow you, follow you, follow you. So Jesus, flip us time and time and time and time again. Whenever we need it, Flip us by your mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. In Jesus' name, amen.